Hi, Paigey. Hi, Paige. Are you editing this on your birthday? Maybe not. Um, but in case you are, you should stop. Okay, I'm gonna enter and we'll flash a couple questions after, at the right point when I say you guys send in some questions. <laughs> okay, I just spilled that everywhere. <laughs> I think that's the beginning of the video. Okay, they just spilled my coffee. Hi, hi, you guys sent in some questions. They're pretty stupid and I'm gonna answer them. I'm gonna answer them. There's coffee all over the floor. Let's go. Ooh, what the heck? I never film in here. Got too many stuff going on. I never film in here. Get off. So I figured today could be a good day to film in here. And we're gonna do a craft. We're gonna do kind of a fun, silly craft. What? I didn't like that. What is that for? I'll kill you. Oh shoot. Kind of a fun, silly craft. While well, I answer some questions, close some loops. I have just this frame, pretty simple frame with a whatever print photograph in it. Somebody just gave it to me, not like as a gift, just as like trash. You think I don't keep tons of trash? First of all, I love trash. Trash is great. And I don't really like what's in here. So let's just do something else with the frame. Hmm? Something easy and quick. My hair looks stupid. Looking like a lion. My hair's being extra big today. One, one of the questions that came in was what shampoo and conditioner I use. Nothing fancy. I just use Herbal Essences shampoo and it took me forever to realize that it actually makes a big difference. It, it, uh, when I don't use that shampoo and conditioner, my hair is way flatter and grosser. Okay, what are we doing? Let's get it together. I need a stretch. The number one most important question someone sent in, opinion, are leggings that give us very pronounced camel toes acceptable to wear in public? Please, I can't believe you don't know my opinion on this. First of all, Talked about this a lot on my podcast, not for everyone. I don't have the time, I don't have the time to be not having a camel toe. I'm a woman and I have a body, thank God. Thank God I do. Um, toes be happening. Yeah, and I get self-conscious of it. I get self-conscious of it in the gym. Like, one of the things I'm most afraid of, for some reason, is, is this idea of like guys laughing at me behind my back. So that's like a real fear I have. One of the weird added bonuses of doing YouTube is that I've come to think of meanness or bullying or trolling um, very differently now. There's something about being on YouTube where if someone, like if I'm in a YouTube video and somebody was a stranger commented like, eh, she's a camel toe. I'd be like, yeah, dog. I'm like a female human who has a body. Like that's what you, like you watch this video and that's what you wanted to write? That's what you wanted to write, okay? Okay, it just makes me think very little of you. It's kind of easy to dismiss it. I'm a person living my life But to receive those comments in person is feels very different But but there's actually no difference between them. So that's a fly <laughs> Something about receiving and dealing with like hate comments on YouTube Which the internet has been pretty nice to me, but it's just taught me like how little hate and mean opinions matter in the outside world as well. Like if somebody really was like, oh, that girl has a camel toe, I'd be like, fucking, you better fucking hope I have a camel toe. I'm, I'm lucky to have a camel. I don't know, it's like it's human. It's like, yes, I have a vagina, who knew? So yes, do I sometimes feel embarrassed of it? Sure. Do I have the time even to be bothered? I do not. Next question. This is um, my very milky coffee. Please don't comment on how much milk is in my coffee. I've had plenty of boyfriends already do that. They took care of it. You know what I was thinking about? Men, all the men I've ever dated. They've all decided it was an important mission for them to get me to drink my coffee black. Why? So that it tastes less good? Why? And you know what I realized after I shared that rant in a YouTube video? Half of these dudes were addicted to ketamine. Like, oh, are we taking care of our bodies? Do you want me to put more, less sugar and less cream in my body? How about you stop doing ketamine? How about that? That comeback never occurred to me. I was just like, you're right, I'm bad to be drinking this milky coffee. What? How about you go to rehab? 
These are a bunch of wallpaper samples. I love this one. These were all backup options for the bathroom. I actually think this would have been a really great one. I almost chose this one. This is very similar to what went into my bathroom makeover, but this is a different color. This is all orange. The other has some pink. These are pretty, I can link all of these for you guys. Another question was like my favorite wallpaper supplier. Renter friendly wallpaper, they won't sponsor me, so I hate to say it, but I hate to say it. Spoon flower. You know what? Give me a dollar. Give me a dollar. Give me a dollar for a holler. Is that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll link them. They're good though. They got renter friendly stuff. And then this roommate's wallpaper is also good. But spoon flower is a lot of options. As much as it pains me to say that. I think that's what's gonna be the background. Hold on, hold on. This could be fun. Today's video is sponsored by Ritual. You've heard of them, you know about them, and I'm gonna tell you why I like them. As I've mentioned before, I was raised by two medical professionals. My dad's a doctor, my mom is a nutritionist. She always had us taking a multivitamin. I take the Ritual multivitamin, the um, Essential Women's Plus. And to be clear, taking a multivitamin is not a replacement for a nutrient-rich diet. But my mom always had us take a multivitamin. It's just kind of like a little bit of a backup plan to give your diet a boost. We all probably have gaps in our diet. This multivitamin is formulated for women's 18 to 49. Includes things like omega-3, iron, magnesium, vitamin B12. The biggest difference for me is taking a multi, a women's multivitamin with iron. I don't know. I'm like telling everybody I know to take an iron, including a women's multivitamin. The other product that I love from Ritual is their Symbiotic, which is not just a prebiotic, it's also a post and probiotic, get with it. Prebiotics support the growth of beneficial bacteria and a postbiotic supports gut barrier function. If you know, you know about the gut. I've had a lot of gut problems in my life and I've put a lot of time and money and energy into trying to solve it. So I wanna do everything possible to support gut health. It can help relieve mild and occasional bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation, and just supports gut and digestive health. Again, these are not a replacement for a well-balanced diet that's nutrient rich. I'm never gonna get on here and say something that doesn't make sense, but this is here to like fill in the gaps. I prefer this multivitamin because it's a once daily capsule. It can be taken anytime. You don't have to make sure you take it with food or without or whatever. It doesn't ever upset your stomach. I recently got a little shelf on my fridge. I have a little like magnet shelf on my fridge just for my Ritual products. Uh, Ritual's been a great supporter of this channel. If you wanna check out their multivitamins, prebiotic, postbiotic, if you wanna check them out, you can use the code Caroline20. Girl, you know you're gonna get 20% off your first month. With code Caroline20, go to ritual.com slash Caroline20. You know how it works, dude. And um, yeah, do that and you'll have a good time. I highly recommend. Thanks to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. Here we go. Somebody wrote in and asked, this is a great question. When do you think you will feel truly successful? That's a great question. I'll answer it, I guess, in two different ways. <laughs> the, the healed answer, the answer I should give, and then the real answer. But I feel like that's such an important question that all of us should be stopping to ask ourselves. One of my favorite YouTube channels is Colin and Samir. They specialize in talking about the creator economy, including like the YouTuber economy. Oh shoot. I don't think I have a working screwdriver to unscrew this. Is my whole plan foiled? I'll kill you, I'll kill you. But they talk a lot about like defining for yourself what is enough, what is enough. It's important on YouTube because like technically you don't have a salary or I guess for any freelance work, you don't have a salary. So the amount of money you can make, if that's how you're evaluating success, is only tied to like how much you're willing to work. So if you never think about what's enough, maybe you'll work infinitely and you become a workaholic and that's your life and you never feel like you reach enough because you could always make more. And that really applies to so many jobs. Or like, um, what's enough prestige for you? What's enough impressiveness? What's enough achievement? I don't actually think I have a screwdriver. Oh wait, ha ha ha. Yeah, bro. I, I think a lot of us could really benefit from stopping to ask like, what is enough? So for me, I definitely have a number in my head that I'm like, if I could make this amount of money, I think I would be exorbitantly comfortable. First of all, I've lived off 
I've lived off 30,000 a year for the first 10 years of my life. That was my income as a waitress, as a babysitter, is 30,000 a year. So I know what I can live off of, you know? I don't spend a lot of money. I honestly already feel successful. Like I already feel like I am, I found a place where I have unique talents and there's people who like see and appreciate that and it brings value to my life and to others. That's, how is that not success? And I can support myself financially. Like, how is that not success? That's, I already feel like I've found success. So from there, I guess success changes. Like I would like to be able to maintain that. There's always this fear in YouTube that like it won't last very long because how many, you know, 50 year old YouTubers are there? Or lifelong YouTubers, it's not a lot. But in the meantime, success for me, I think is really like making unique work that I feel like other someone else couldn't make. That has always been really important to me, is like originality. It was never rewarding to me to just like do something someone else has done. So it has to be original. Oh, I don't even know where that went. What is that for? I don't even know what that's for. It's gonna be hard to put back together. Wow. This one's rude as hell. You look like the female version of Tom Hiddleston. Do you get that a lot? Okay, I saw this question. First of all, first of all, okay, maybe. Okay, maybe, but I got this question and I was like, oh, I'm not including this. This is a troll because I, I have got this question before. I have received this question before a bunch of times and I was like, oh, it's just one person fucking with me. I'm not gonna give them the time of day. And then I went on YouTube and I searched Tom Hiddleston in comments, people left on my videos, and they're all from different accounts, which doesn't mean it's not all the same person, but it made me feel like, oh, I feel like this is a genuine question from people. It does hurt my feelings and I do see it and how dare you here's another work related one how are you feeling about where your YouTube channel currently is love ya bitch I love ya I'm feeling good about it one of my big goals this year was to work wise was to expand from my audience my audience has been mostly like females 20 to 30 interested in design and like I enjoy design but in design is just like one thing I do sometimes it's just like what I happen to start doing on YouTube but design is like the like eighth thing I'm interested in there's so many people who are way better at it than me oh this is gonna be fun uh, look at this okay peel and stick wallpaper yeah so my goal this year I was like I don't feel like my YouTube channel is just for women or just for a certain age group. And it's actually, it's actually not because I know there's a lot of kids who watch this YouTube channel with their family. Sorry, I talked about ketamine. And a lot of people who are a bit older than the main 20s to 30 audience, whatever. Like, I love it. And that's that has always made sense to me. I wanted to make a show that made me feel the way my favorite show did. Like, I loved The Office. Not that anything will ever be as good as The Office, not that I could ever make anything as good as The Office, but the way that it made me feel, which was that like, I could watch it on repeat, I would re-watch episodes, it was always comforting, whether I was in a good mood or a bad mood, it kind of lifted me up. It was super silly and stupid and funny, and sometimes it made me cry. That's like the feeling that I'm chasing with my own YouTube channel. Again, not drawing a parallel between me and the majesty that is the office, but the feeling of it. Wow, this is so satisfying. Like I would just put this in a frame. Actually, I will put this in a frame. So I, I'm happy where my, with where my YouTube channel is now. I know that like there's a more diverse group of people watching it and that just feels, that feels correct. Cause to me, it's never felt like a design show. I just feel like it's like a show for people. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> is that stupid? Is she an egotistical twat? Yeah, 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 she is. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna make a prediction right now. If you watch the channel for a while, you know I had knee surgery in the summer. It's technically doing fine. It's technically doing fine. I have a prediction I'm gonna be back in another surgery. I don't know. I just have a feeling. Have you ever cut your hair short? You seem like a long hair girly, but just curious. Oh wait, what if I snap them? I cut all my hair off. I've actually done that twice. I did that twice. Once when I was au pairing in Italy and 
another time when I quit acting and I was like going into coding school. I actually really liked the pixie cut. What sucked was growing it out. So kind of what I picture we're doing with this, I just want to have a couple shapes that are like silhouetted, maybe with like in white, but I don't know shapes of what? Shapes of what? I'm torn between a chair and a face. I feel like chairs have like a very fun energy to them and a lot of personality. Got a lot of questions about Kazoo. What kind of dog is Kazoo? She's not a dog. She is just a piece of dust. She is so small. It, the, the photos don't even accurately show how small she is. She is a beaver terrier. It's pronounced beaver terrier, but it is spelled viewer terrier. My little sister loves dogs. To say that Julia loves dogs is an understatement. Julia would bark at us before she chose to use the English language with us when she was a kid. She has not been in my videos much, A, because she was in college and living her life. And then she was teaching in France and she just got back from France. So she's been gone, but she's gonna be in the videos. Julia's the best. She's also a very talented artist. So she really should be doing this with me. Okay, let's do some quickies. Your energy gives the most unhinged of Gen Z with millennial taste. Thank you, how dare you, thank you. Not really a question though, is it? I randomly got a lot of questions about Chip and Joanna Gaines and the Magnolia Empire. People want my hot take on Fixer Upper. I love Fixer Upper. I have nothing to say about any of this. I don't know, is there some scandal with them? People are always wanting me to ca ca like comment on scandals and controversies. I never know what they are. Is there something going on? First of all, first of all, Fixer Upper is a great show. Do I need to design every home like that? No, could like most of us couldn't even do it that well. They did a great thing. The show was great in a period of time. They innovated something. It was a trend. Now we're kind of over it. Well, they were lovely to watch. What the fuck is there to complain about? People are so weird. Do I admire it now for like, as a design taste maker? No. Is there plenty of other value? Yeah. The fact that a bunch of people sent questions about Chip and Joanna Gaines makes me wonder if there's like some scandal going on right now. I'm not gonna look it up. I don't give a fuck. Okay, what do your tiny finger tattoos say? Top tattoo says laugh. And the bottom says, please. This is the second tattoo I ever got. I was like 17. I was living in Italy. I was very depressed and unmedicated. And like comedy was really my like lifeboat. I worked in comedy for a while or, you know, tried to. And I don't know. It's always just been like my coping mechanism. Comedy, I guess. Trying to make people laugh. Make myself laugh. So I got that tattooed when I was super depressed as like, this is like a purpose, it's a reason for living. It was not a reminder to myself to live, laugh, love. It was not that, it was not supposed to be uplifting. It was more just like a, this is what you do or else you're gonna die. And people would always be like, I'll live, laugh, love. And I was like, no, not like that, no. It's not supposed to be uplifting. So then a few years later, I got please added to the bottom. I felt like that underscored the patheticness of the, of the message, laugh, please. It's like, I'm begging you. Um, it's not uplifting, it's pathetic. I don't really feel that way anymore, but I like that tattoos change and they're just like a snapshot of who you were as a depressed 17 year old. Hmm. Okay, it turns out I didn't like that. I tried to draw my face and I can tell that that is just gonna scare me. I don't want that. So we're gonna try this again. And I'm gonna go with chairs. Instead, I'm just gonna draw a chair. Hot take, to pee or not to pee in the shower? Obviously to pee, please don't waste my time. What else are we doing in there? A lot of questions about friends and friendship things. Everyone's struggling with friend stuff because being friends is weird as an adult. Making friends is hard as an adult. Keeping friends, again, talked about this a lot. Oh, we actually did a whole friendship episode on my podcast. I'm gonna link the episode. Tips on making new friends as an adult how to end a one-sided, draining, inorganic friendship with a needy person. Yeah, all this is tricky stuff and it happens to all of us. Sometimes we are that friend, um, the needy friend who's a little draining and sometimes we're the one receiving that friend. I mean, it happens to everybody, no judgment, honestly. First of all, those aren't friendships. Doing something as charity is not a friendship and they do end up feeling that. So it's not really a favor that you do somebody and it, it ends up draining you, it ends up kind of keeping them from finding a more meaningful friendship that they're actually in the market for. But it's really uncomfortable to, to not want to see somebody or to disappoint them. And I've, I've been the friend that someone has had to break up with. People have 
I, I've had I've received friend breakups people who didn't want to see me anymore and I took those opportunities to like learn what I was fucking up ideally and like grow from it but it really does happen to everyone yeah if you have to end a friendship with a frag a friendship with a fragile needy person inorganic draining one-sided I would just like reply less frequently you're not a slave to your phone you're not a slave to your text maybe you see them instead of every week you see them once a month I think everybody wants to find a way through that situation where they don't have to be the bad guy and they get to look really good but like it sucks to disappoint someone it sucks to hurt someone and um, you can go a more direct route with it I, I doubt that will go over well with this kind of person I think I think mostly I've seen those just like fade out as an adult it's, it's having a friendship, it's not so dissimilar from dating. Like you guys both have to be in the market for the same thing at the same time. Otherwise it's just not a match. So like we all experience this and we all survive it. I think it's, I think it's not great to lead people on and to waste their time. And it just feels disingenuine. It, it fucking kills me to do something disingenuine. It just, it like, it erodes my soul. So, hmm. Okay, I drew this chair, and now I'm gonna cut it out. It's definitely hard making friends as an adult, especially once you've lost like the shared environment of school or maybe of a workplace, you're working from home, like it, it, that, that just had friendship built into it. You know, friendships of proximity are the main way that we keep friends. We're just in the same space, they're close by, it's convenient, they're on the same schedule, in the same life stage. So the more isolated we've become, it's true, it's harder. I think the best thing to keep in mind with making new friends as an adult, like I've had to do so many times throughout my life, is that like not everything will stick. I feel like you just like try a bunch of stuff the same way you go on a bunch of dates and like not every date leads to marriage. Like you join a bunch of clubs, you have a bunch of lunches, you do a bunch of coffees, and when most of them don't result in a new best friend, you don't say, oh, see, the system doesn't work. It's like, no, it's rare to find connection. You do have to throw a lot of stuff up to the wall and see what sticks in order to find real connection because real connection is rare. I find it very rare. The number of people I connect with, it's not a big number. Do you still run into street man? I get questions about street man a lot. <laughs> I ran into street man a number of times after the videos. We never acknowledged each other. It was always a moment where like, I nervously looked away, which I didn't mean to. I would have been happy to say hi to him, but it was just like a knee jerk thing, you know, where you like see somebody and then you like look away and you're like, I was like, ugh. And then there are a few times he did that and we both just had like these awkward interactions. He used to always walk on my street, the street I live on, and that's where I would always see him. I think he took a new route. I think he took a new route because he used to go on like daily walks. Ah! But I think he took a new route because I don't see him there anymore. Oh well. I'm not sure the full story of what happened with him, but suffice it to say he, he ended up being not worth not worth the time. Ah! I'm delighted to announce that this is all going pretty poorly. I ended up changing my chair design to a simpler chair. I like this chair. I traced it out. Cute! Cute as hell! And I kind of like that because the negative space will come through like the fabric of the cushion. Cool, really cool, really cool job. Third favorite reptile. Newt is number three. We had Newt as kids. We named him Isaac Newton, come on. Snake, love a snake. Cause I love to cuddle. And snakes are the ultimate cuddle. And kazoo. Cause she a lizard. She is but a lizard. Where's your TV stand sideboard from? I need it in black. Oh, in my living room, it's from Ikea. It's from Ikea, it's very affordable. I got two of the Besta units. They have a three piece unit, but instead I got two two piece units for a super long one. Ooh, this is a good question. How to deal with a toxic friend who flirts with every single guy she is setting you up with? I have had the friend who always flirts with my boyfriends. And you know, it's kind of a fine line. Cause you know, I think sometimes the way that I talk to my girlfriends would be considered flirting. I don't think we need to be like puritanical about it. You know, like joking, teasing, all of that can kind of be considered flirting. So I don't know. I don't think there's much to say about it. If it gets really bad, I think you could say in like an earnest way, like this relationship really matters to me. 
like I would love for you to be on my team. I think it can be worth saying it once just so they know that like you feel a little betrayed by it. But you also don't have to say anything. I mean, ultimately the way I feel is that like whatever your love interest is, like it's a choice. They have to choose you. We all have the opportunity to have a crush. We all are still like attracted people just because you're married or in a couple or whatever. Doesn't mean like you stop feeling attracted to people. I guess it just means that like you keep choosing. You keep choosing to commit yourself to the one you're committing yourself to. So it's a choice. People are gonna make the choice. And whether you have a friend who flirts with the other or not, ooh, let's put this on before the glue dries. Is it in the center? I don't even know. I think the glue already dried. Okay, let's try that again. If somebody's doing that, they just are, they really need attention from wherever they can get it. Which like, I relate, I have a YouTube channel, I love attention. I don't see that as like a relationship issue or like an issue in your relationship. If they choose you, they choose you. I see that more as like a, oh, you need to talk to your friend about the fact that you don't feel like they're being your friend. It's tricky though, cause I don't know, if they're being shitty, they're just gonna deny it. So I wouldn't try, I wouldn't get in the weeds of trying to like, make the court case of how they're flirting with your love interests. Like, <sighs> hopefully you can say it once and they get it and everybody moves on and everything's fine. You know, sometimes we all need to be called out. I need to be called out sometimes. I need to be called out all the time, actually. Rugs on top of carpet. We're renting and have gross carpets, but a rug feels excessive. Okay, that's a great question. This is a great design question. If you have wall-to-wall -wall carpet, it doesn't mean that you can't have a rug on top of it because the rug is in like a rug in your living room let's say is not just to like put something soft on the living room floor like that's nice it makes it cozy but it also defines a zone and like starts to like split up the room into zones so if you have wall-to-wall -wall carpet but maybe it's at least cozy i hope but it's not defining any zone it's wall-to-wall -wall, so everything just bleeds together so you can still use a carpet a rug on top to cover up some ugly carpet if it's an ugly carpet to find a zone and like, here's our sitting area, here's our little side table area, whatever it is, and to unite like the furniture over there. So I would definitely, definitely still do, wow, I messed this up. Especially if you're not liking your wall-to-wall -wall carpet, I would definitely layer a rug on top. Skincare, best cleanser, serum, moisturizer. I'm 40, help. Well, number one best thing you can do is see a dermatologist and just stop taking any kind of skin advice from me, from YouTube, from TikTok. These fucking 20 year olds out there making TikToks about how to take care of your skin. First of all, you've only had skin for like four days. You don't know anything about skin. Stop giving 40 year olds advice about 19 year old skin. Also, it also drives me crazy. I feel like I saw this forever is people who like never had acne. They don't even know what acne is really because they haven't had it giving you advice on how they got clear skin. It's like, yeah, you don't really even know the, the skin privilege. I would say, why is everybody taking skincare tips from 19 year olds? It's like their first week of having skin. I feel like a lot of the skincare advice is from people who already have good skincare. And then they're like, I used Mario Badescu. I don't think those products are very good, right? They, I think they certainly don't help you if you actually have like skin problems to solve. So I would go to a dermatologist. For me, I've been prescribed Accutane. I'm on Trentinoin now, which is good for like some anti-aging stuff, um, like skin. I don't know, what is the science word? Like re, I want to say refurbishing, but that can't be the word. I use like a very natural moisturizer. I use like CeraVe with SPF in it. For me, for my acne skin, the best face wash is Panoxyl. It's different for everybody. So I, I can't, like I know that works for me. It's not a pretty bottle, it fucking, like fixes my acne but um my sister also struggles with her skin and it doesn't work for her so it's very everyone's skin reacts to different things i try to keep it simple i think the other big mistake that people make is like buying too many products and changing ingredients too often and like switching up what goes into the regimen like if you want to follow someone on social media follow some actual dermatologists that you feel like you can trust and go see your dermatologist oh the other best thing i've done it for my skin is microneedling and specifically RF microneedling. When I first moved home to DC from Ohio, was going through a breakup, moved in with my parents, so I wasn't paying rent. The the gift I bought myself was I bought myself microneedling packages for my skin. They're expensive. I got such good results. It does help with pore size. It helps a bit with 
some acne scarring and just like the brightness like the brightness you see on my face I have a little highlighter on right now but the general like brightness that you start to lose as you get older microneedling was really good for that I was led to that because I've done a bunch of lasers and things and whenever I go to an esthetician I always ask them like what's your favorite procedure to do and they always all love microneedling I've done it's called Vivace that's a knife do, you, do your research, dude. Go to like a reputable med spa, dermatologist. Okay, look at this chair. Ever gotten backlash for being a hater slash sarcastic slash opinionated how to handle others' opinions? Totally, dude, totally. Another like beautiful learning life lesson from YouTube. People complain a lot about like, you know, getting hate on YouTube or getting the comments, but I really do think of it like, First of all, yes, sometimes it keeps me up at night and like I lose sleep and I'll cry myself to sleep. That has happened. But that's usually not from hate comments. That's usually from people like misinterpreting or misunderstanding something I say that like really matters to me. It's very painful to be misunderstood, um, but it's gonna happen. Can't spend your whole life trying to explain who you are to people. There's no time. But as far as like hate and opinions, or people not liking something about you. Literally on like my last video, not last video, but two videos ago, the uh, interior design tips for hot sexy bachelors. A lot of it's me screaming. A lot of it, it's basically like what would have been a stand up set if I was still doing stand up comedy. And I'm yelling it and I'm screaming and I'm being silly like it's a show. And I even talk about, you know, don't leave a comment saying you need me to calm down. Don't need you to leave a comment saying I'm too loud. Like I'm tired of these comments. Come up with a different criticism. And still I got like one criticism from some woman who was like, why, why do you have to yell it though? You have such a great personality otherwise. Like, first of all, bit, that is my personality, you know? And I did reply and I was just like, it sounds like you don't like my presentation style and that's okay. I'm not gonna change it because I'm having fun. And because that thing that you don't like, that you so don't like, is the very thing that other people love me for. And I think that's true for a lot of us, that the very thing that makes us specific and unique and that the people who love us love us for is the thing that other people, the people who don't get us, maybe hate us for. And some of the best advice I've ever received is like, why would you change the thing that people love about you just to placate the people that don't fucking get you? Why would you change <laughs> to please the people that don't get you? This woman who's commenting like, oh, you have good ideas and good personality otherwise, she does not get me. She does not get my personality. She doesn't get my personality at all. And I can promise you anything that I change, she, she's never gonna end up loving me. Like this person doesn't really like me. So why would I start changing to please her? It's not to say that you shouldn't consider people's feedback and that you shouldn't learn. Like there's plenty of things that I should change about myself. For sure. Who are you changing it for? Do you respect and value the opinion of the person who's giving you this feedback? That's a good filter. Okay, it's a chair. Oh, what the hell, it's a chair. Okay, that's gonna go there. Or is it gonna go there? I, I don't really know what this is. Okay, dude, I gotta make one more chair. Oh, look, it's freaking guy. Okay, probably should have thought this through more before. I like didn't even really know what I wanted to do. <laughs> when I sat down. All I knew is I wanted to use this wallpaper. Maybe next time I'll think it through. Is something I say at the end of literally every video. <laughs> this is so silly. I'm gonna put it in the frame. <laughs> Lol. Will I ever figure out how to assemble this? That doesn't seem correct. What the hell? Uh... Oh, looks silly. Ugh. Okay, it's been a second for you, but that was fucking 30 minutes trying to reframe this thing because it's like a professionally framed thing on the back. I would say if you're gonna take apart a professionally framed frame, maybe take a picture of what it's supposed to look like on the back before you do it. Because I just lost years on my life. Another day, another foible. But I, you know what, I kind of like this final product. <laughs> look at this stupid little thing. <laughs> I titled it in the corner you can barely even see it. it. Says some good chairs, some good chairs. 
I like them. I really do like them. I'm gonna hang it up. That's it, you guys. I will leave you with some parting words of wisdom. Inspirational, let's Google an inspirational quote. Ooh, that's a good one. <clears throat> From the old Winston, Winston Churchill. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. I'll allow it.